Hello and welcome back to the NRLW Weekly Podcast. Thanks to Light and Easy Fueling Australian Sport. I'm Molly Silva and as always I'm joined by my amazing co-host Ruan Sims and it is our final show of the year. I know. It makes me want to cry. But how lucky are we to have had such an incredible NRLW season? On the show today, we reflect on those two amazing final games we saw over the weekend and, of course, give you a big prediction of what's going to happen this Sunday for the NRLW Grand Final. And we talk about the Dally M's. Because, mm. Rue, you and I, straight after this, we're heading out, getting our hair and makeup done, yep. getting ready to hit the red carpet. Yeah, we're going to look a million bucks tonight. I'm glad you said we that. We absolutely are. <laughs> right now, not so much in my I respect you. Look <laughs> fabulous as always. I'm struggling, but I'll be fine. <laughs> Come six o'clock tonight. I'll be looking great. <laughs> so, um, before we get to that, plenty of footy to get through mm, first. Yeah. And for the last time this year on the NRLW Weekly Podcast, it is time for our light and easy hungriest player and team of the week, Rude. Mm, well... Because we only had two games, mm. I, I needed to make sure I kept my eyeballs on both of them, and mm. I did. And my hungriest player for this week is none other than the Roosters fullback, Sam Bremner. Oh, Getting a double in a, any game is amazing. Mm. To get a double in a preliminary final to help assure your team a spot in the grand final the next week, pretty impressive. And considering she only came back a week before the season <laughs> started this year, to come back and have such a significant impact oh, uh, sure. on her side, the Roosters, is pretty fantastic. I can't so. imagine how she feels to think that, you know, you start 2024 thinking it's going to be one way, you know, working behind the scenes with a team and you're finishing this footy season by playing in a grand final. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Love it. It's pretty cool. And then my hungriest team of the week, None other than the Cronulla Sharks. I think for them to come out the way they did, uh, obviously losing to the Broncos a couple of weeks ago mm. by four points, to come back and beat them 14-0, holding the Broncos scoreless for the first time in their history to hold the Broncos scoreless who have a huge amount of attack across the field. I think that's pretty impressive. So that's why the Sharkies, and they're getting into their maiden grand final. So yeah. that's why they they are my hungriest team of the week. And they certainly look like what they did at the beginning of the season. Yeah, they went back to what worked for them. Absolutely. So, and it was on full display. So, yeah, it sets up an incredible, oh. incredible contest for this yes. weekend. I mean, the stage is truly set. I have to say around admittedly before the game where the Roosters and Sharks played each other in the regular season, mm. I said, I have a feeling that these are the two teams we're going to see in the grand final. After that game, I didn't feel as confident, <laughs> yeah. but I am so glad I, you know, was correct in that original prediction because I think that they are so evenly matched and yeah. this is going to be an incredible matchup. So let's really get into it. Mm. Today, we're going to get in the weeds and talk about where this game could be won and lost. So Rue, I'm going to ask yep. you to begin with, why the Roosters can win? Well, the Roosters have, again, incredible strike. They've got the best defence in the competition and it's been like they've had the best defence all season. Mm. So uh, the Sharks were sort of leading that charge until they played each other. Yeah. I mean, the Sharks had only conceded something like 50 points, I think, leading up to that Roosters game. And the Roosters just came into that game like they'd been shot out of a rocket. Yeah, They have so much strike. I think for them to have... Jess Surge's back starting. It was yeah. good to see her come off the bench last week, mm -hmm. but then to have her back starting, Isabel Kelly as well, getting through that game with yeah. that elbow injury. Having both of those centres in there is absolutely incredible for mm. them. And for Taryn Aiken <sighs> to come back in after yeah. that AC injury, which she did against the Sharks, mm. uh, and take the line on pretty fearlessly. Yeah. I mean, she played into the line. She got hit a few times. She mm. still, she kept getting up and kept coming. Yeah. And that really impressed me. Uh, obviously, I've always been impressed with their forward pack. Yes. Amber Hall, uh, we were chatting to Millie Elliott uh, about her a couple of weeks ago and she had the best one-liner for Amber. She said, it's like having a cheat code. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> out there. And I loved that. And yeah. it really stuck. Like it made me laugh. But at mm. the same time, it is because if you get the ball to her close to the line, she's so difficult to stop. So they've got incredible strike there. And then obviously with... Jess Surge is coming back into the lineup. Jasmine Strange has gone onto the bench. And what we've mm. seen for the last couple of weeks, she will then come on into that left edge back row position for Amber Hall yeah. and Amber Hall have a rest. Mm. So, yeah, that's it's been a pretty good sort of uh, rotation that John Strange has had. And I think just that strike of 
Taryn Aiken's ability with ball in hand, taking the line on, she's become this great organising half. Jocelyn Kelleher's yeah. kicking game has been fantastic. You know, Keely Davis has been a bit of an unsung hero through the middle. Yeah. She gets plenty of work done. They just got impressive figures mm. across the park, yeah. the Roosters. Sam Bremner at the back. I mean, I think their shapes that they've been running the last few weeks have been really slick yeah. and they've looked really good. Mm. So yeah, that's where I'd be looking. I mean, it's like we spoke about both these teams are so evenly matched, but the Roosters have got such incredible strike yeah. across the field. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You, you list almost the entire team. Oh, you can. Because they're, they're just such a well-oiled machine. And yeah. I think, like, to have, as you said, those players come back into the side at this point of the season yes. is perfect timing. And I yeah. think Taryn just looked like she was making up for lost time. And yeah. And she looked comfortable. Yes. She looked comfortable. Yes. She didn't look out of sorts with that no. shoulder. She looked comfortable. Yeah. And she is an incredible attacking player. Mm. Uh, she sees things so well and you can see her when she's calling for the ball. So, yeah, yeah like it's going to be exciting to, <laughs> again, get to see her run around oh, this weekend. Yeah. So on the flip side then, yep. how do these Sharkies win and make, you know, the, sure those Roosters strikers and, and all that big power, like you said, um, you know, doesn't get across the line? Yeah, well, look, when you go back, let's rewind a month, mm. they lose to the Roosters. Yeah. 40 nil, mm. um, big shaker, but coming into that, they won six games in a row. First yeah. time ever that had been done in mm. NRLW history. And they were doing that through their defense. They yeah. had really good line speed. They were sitting in their systems in attack and defense. They weren't getting bored with what they were doing. And then they just copped a bit of a knock yep. against the roosters. Yep. And then they copped a knock the following week mm. against the Broncos, but they only lost that in the last yeah, few, you know, a couple of minutes. Mm. And then the Tigers came out firing. They lost that game. Mm. So I think the weekend just gone, that win against the Broncos does them a world of good because yeah. they went back to what was working for them mm -hmm. at the start of the year. Yeah. They were working through their systems in attack. They were just punching in, mm. they were finding space, quick play the balls. I think what's actually has improved last week and needs to stay the same this week is their discipline. Yeah. Uh, I think they were sort of allowing teams out through yardage and mm. letting teams off the hook because they were just coming up with silly errors mm. or giving away penalties. Yeah. Tackle four, three, four, five, mm. which are coach killers, as we yeah. all know. <laughs> and um, so I think their discipline was a lot better mm. on the weekend. Yeah. And everybody played their role. Yes. On the weekend. Yeah. Everybody played their role. Mm. And they'll need to do that again this week. Mm. They really will. But I tell you what, I have been incredibly impressed with Georgia Hannaway. Yeah. Like stepping into that left yep. edge position. And then for Emma Tonegato to push back to fullback after mm. doing a full preseason yeah, yeah, yeah. at six mm. and then playing the first half of the season at six and then having to go back to fullback. Mm. You know, that, I mean, it's pretty handy that you've got the Sky Blues fullback yeah. <laughs> playing as your six and then you can drop back. Well, speaking of Emma, at the finals launch, I um, sat down and spoke to her for our um, nine coverage and I was asking her to reflect on sort of what the 2023 season looked like and how much they came out firing to start this mm. one. And I really like how she said, you know, we sat down together a as a group and said, look at what our team's like. We can actually do this. And it's almost like, and this is not me knowing anything about it, you would know more than me, Rue, but it feels like it, after those couple of losses, they've gone, hey, let's get back together, remind ourselves what we can do. And that's what we saw on the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think even, I think in the same, I think I read something, around the same interview that you did with her, she said a lot of people wrote them off. 100%. And they did. A lot of yeah. people wrote the Sharks off coming mm. in this year. Mm. I had them as my dark horses. Yes, yes. But obviously I work with them. <laughs> yeah. So I see them. Of I see the workings behind mm. the scenes. I mm. see what the what they're putting into it. And it's not dissimilar to any other side. Every yeah. side is doing that. Every yeah. side's working that hard in the off season. Um, but, yeah, I think because Georgia Hannaway has been playing really well, Taylor Preston's kicking game has been very good. Mm. She's been finishing sets where they God, need them to conversion. be. Yeah, her oh. kicking, her kicking, like her conversions have been fantastic. Really the kick chase has been immense. Mm. Like I, I feel like this year, particularly the Sharks' surging defence on that kick chase has been very good, mm. and it ha it's going to have to be good again this week yeah. because if you provide any of the back five mm. of the Roosters with a chink in your armour, they'll exploit it and they'll yeah. just keep going there. I mean, we saw that. 
against the Knights yes. on the weekend. Yeah. That's what the Roosters did. They found a chink in the armour and mm. they just kept getting at it. Yeah. And so, yeah, the Sharks, they're going to have to do that this week. They're going to have to make, maintain that discipline in defence, maintain their integrity of their line. I mean, the Sharks will be really pleased with turning the Broncos away with four back-to-back sets just before yeah. halftime on the yeah. weekend. I think they ended the game with... The Broncos had 30 tackles in the Sharks' 20. Wow. And the Sharks conceded no points. Yeah. So that gives, I think, would give you a lot of hope and yep. comfort coming mm. into this weekend because there's plenty of attack in this Roosters outfit. Yeah. So, yeah, the Sharks' defence is going to have to really step up. Um, and I tell you what, though, it's probably – if we go on to the next question, yeah, because this is where I think yes. things get exciting. Mm. And the next one that we had down is key player matchups. Yeah, for sure. They're across the park. I know, right? Like I, I, I'm telling you now, like it is, it might sound like a cop out, mm. but if you look at these team lists and you, like I just quickly looked it up while we were chatting, Sam Bremner, Emma Tonegato. Yes. The fullbacks. Right? Straight away. Incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Both have played for New South Wales. Yeah. Um, both have had Jillaroo's representative honours as well. Yeah. You know, I think that is an incredible matchup on its own. Both are from the South Coast. Both are from the <laughs> South Coast, yes. There's something in the water down there. <laughs> South Coast. Yeah. Um, that's incredible. And then you have a look at the two centre pairings. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Penitani and Biddle. Yeah. Versus Kelly and Sergis. Like, that's crazy. Isn't it? And like you, there is an argument to say that Tiana Penitani and Isabel Kelly have been the best centres yes. in the competition this year. Yeah. And, and the captains. Yeah. And the captains. And you see them, they will be going head to head. I love like, that battle. That's fantastic. That is going to be one to keep an eye mm. on. And then you have a look at that power and raw aggression of both Jess Sergis and Anessa Biddle yeah. going head to head. Yeah. Like they're a lot more similar in style than people think. Yes. Both run really hard. Yep. Both will always break that first tackle. Yep. But all four centres love work. Yes. They yep. love their work. They get into it. They just want more and more of it. And they will be probably the biggest meter eaters for both sides. Wow. Without doubt, those yeah. four centres. Yep. And they'll lead the way. Mm. That is one, like you cannot look away because the halves – will want to get the ball to those centers yeah. as often and as quickly as possible. Yep. And it sets up for incredible one-on-one. -on -one. And then it's just going to come down to defensive decisions. Who's making the read? What yes. read are they making? Like, where's the ball being played? Are they going to hit lead lines? Are they going out the back? That's where it's going to become really exciting My as goodness. well. So that's pretty cool. I think probably the, the big one that is a little bit of a mismatch, mm. which will be interesting, is Frezard versus Ravix. Right. So Frez, she will go all day. She will just rip in. She is uncompromising in her competitiveness. Georgia Ravix, tall, Much rangy, taller, yeah. strong. Yeah. Also loves it. Love, yeah. loves the aggression. Yeah, yeah. So those two going up against each mm. other, that will be really, really interesting. interesting to see. Will the Sharks use a kicking game? Yeah. You know, will like, how will that, how will that work? Yeah. You know, so that'll be one to keep an mm. eye on as well. Then the two halves pairings. Yeah. Hannaway and Preston versus Kelleher and Aiken. Yeah. You know, all four have good kicks. Yeah. Um, Kelleher has those, that ability to get right under the ball and, and put. Those spiraling. Yeah. Or and... she gets it up and it just floats. Yeah. It's one of those ugly ones. And yeah. Billy talks about it a lot where, you know, you're in trouble when you can read the Steedon yeah. on the side yeah. of the body. <laughs> And then like it, the ball, as it drops down, sometimes it drops away from you. So yes. you might think you're in a good position to catch it and then it just floats away from you and yeah. all of a sudden, and then the kick chases on you and, you know, like, so there's all of these variables mm. that's exciting. Taryn Aitken's running game is incredible yeah. versus Hannaway's running game as well. And Preston's kicks, she's been finishing consistently and solidly. God. You know, if they're in position, her goal kicking, her versus Kelleher yeah. with their goal kicking will yeah. be incredible. So that's their exciting yeah, matchups. We, we could go through this entire team yeah, we could. And, and pair it, it up because, and I think that for me, if I just completely put my fan hat on, this is what you want in a grand final. hundred percent. Like it, it's, it's going to be something else. Mm. And I, I couldn't be more excited for yeah. this matchup. And look, the thing is as well, like I've just gone through that back line, mm. but I tell you what, none of the, neither of those back lines are going to flourish if their forward pack doesn't. Yeah. And that's the engine room is where games are won and lost. Yeah. 
really is. So the forwards coming together and then how both Tony Herman and John Strange utilise their interchange yep. will have a lot to do, will have a lot to say about the outcome of this game. So, yeah, seeing those those forward packs go head to head, oof, that's oh, going to be epic. I cannot wait. I'm pretty excited. I'm so excited. As you can tell, I'm yes. pretty excited. Well, you know what's also really exciting, Rue, whilst they're in amongst a very, very busy week, preparing for this grand final but today also preparing for the Dally M's in their own hair and makeup <laughs> we've yes. managed to get messages from the two captains themselves Isabel Kelly and Tiana Penitani so let's hear from them now hey Rue and Marley just checking in I just had my hair and makeup done for the Dally M's tonight so grand final week is well and truly underway there's so much going on this week so just trying to be really conscious of investing my energy in all the right places. Um, there's lots of distraction, but honestly, so excited. There's such a buzz around Cronulla at the moment. Uh, we had an open fan day last night at training. So it's the first time that we've had that this season. And it was really nice just to see some familiar faces and to be able to see all of the fans that have backed us this year. Um, I think the girls are still riding the high of winning on Sunday and booking a spot in our first ever grand final as a club. Uh, I know that we'll take that energy into the weekend but uh, haven't really felt the nerves yet. I'm sure that they'll start to come on Friday and Saturday when all of the formalities are over and it's showtime. Nonetheless, looking forward to it. Can't wait for Sunday. It's going to be a big one between us and the Roosters uh, and hopefully we get our first ever win. What a season. The NRLW's been on fire now. The ultimate showdown. The grand final is here. The Roosters with their unrivaled power. Yeah. The Sharks in their first ever grand final with superstars across the park. This will be next level. Roosters Sharks, the NRLW grand final, Sunday, live on 9 and 9 now. Welcome back to the NRLW weekly podcast. Thanks to Light and Easy Fueling Australian Sport. Rue, so good to hear from those captains and I know they're as excited for this matchup as we are. But as we said, they were getting ready for the Dally M's and let's talk about who is in the running for the biggest award in the NRLW. Mm. Um, there's, uh, looking at this list of finalists of all the positions, these are the players that we've been talking about all year, mm. as is expected. Yeah. So we're going to go through each of the positions and I might get your your hot tip for, Ooh, okay. for who's yep. going to um, take it out from yep. your perspective, Rue. So first one, fullback of the year. <sighs> Tough position um, because there's so much talent. And the finalists are Abby Church from the Eels, Tamika Upton from the Knights and Tegan Berry from the Dragons. Oh, that is a good shortlist, isn't mm. it? I think Abby won a couple of awards for the Eels last night. She sure um, did. Monday night. Yeah. No, yeah. it was last night. It was, was last there. night. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. You hosted yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I think Abby's probably been the biggest improver. Yeah. But I feel like Tamika would have... Racked up Garnered the a lot of votes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm probably going to go with Tamika. Mm. Yeah. And I, like, I think Tegan would have as well. Yes. But I think it'll be very close. But yeah, I think Upton. Yes. Okay. Well, and she won the, the overall Dally M last year. Yes. So it's always good to see her at the top yeah. there. Winger of the year. The mm. nominees are, i oh, sorry, the finalists are Julia Robinson, Madison Bartlett, Shakaya Tungye from the Raiders, mm -hmm. Sheridan Gallagher from the Knights and... Stacey Walker yeah. from the Broncos. Yeah. That last one does not surprise me not whatsoever. At all. But all of these wingers have absolutely been fantastic. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be between Robbo, Sheridan, yeah. and Stacey. Uh I think I'm gonna go with Julia Robinson. Yeah. 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 I feel like what when we spoke about the RLPA dream team last yeah. week, there were two wingers and they were both the Broncos yeah. ones. Yeah. Um Julia, she's a highlight reel. She's yeah. a living highlight reel, all yeah. those tries she scored and all that leaping. So, I, yeah, I feel like she could yeah. definitely be there. All right, centre of the year from the Sharks. I mean, this could potentially be the toughest category. Mm. Anessa Biddle, Isabel Kelly from the Roosters, Jamie Chapman from the Titans, Nele Hufanga from the Broncos mm. and Tiana Penetani from the Sharks. Like, come on. How, and also how cool three of those players are going to be in the grand final this weekend. I love that so much. <laughs> and Jess Sturgis would probably be on that short list if, if she, she wasn't get injured. injured. <laughs> so like, cause she's only played a few games. Yeah, exactly. So if she hadn't, she'd probably be on this short yeah, list for too. Sure, for sure. Uh, this one, this is probably one of the hardest ones yeah. for me to pick. 
I, Ness has been amazing. Yeah. So has Izzy. Look, they all have, but I'm, I'm tossing up between Isabel Kelly and Tiana Penatani. Mm. I'm tossing up between those two. Um, oh, I'll go with Tiana. Mm. I, I've been, imp- I've been really impressed with her yeah. this year. So yeah. I, I, yeah, her and Izzy are definitely yeah. at the top of that yeah. for sure. If they, if it's tied between those two, I would also not be surprised. Yeah, That's yeah. how close it yeah, is. For That's sure. how close it is. Alrighty. Five eighth of the year. Mm-hmm. Emma Tonegato for the mm. Sharks, Gal Broughton for the Broncos and Sahara Tamarai from the Raiders. Yeah. I think if Emma, she was playing so well yes. in 5'8", if she didn't get moved back to fullback, yeah. I'd probably say Emma. Mm. But I, just the impact that Gail and Z have on their sides, yeah. like Z was incredible for yeah. the Raiders. I think just the whole, having Gail come back into the lineup for the Broncos, that changed the complexion Completely. of the Broncos. Completely. So I think probably Gail mm. for this one. But again, another close run. Race. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a shame the season's so short, I know. right? Because they're all so neck and neck the whole way through. Yeah. Halfback of the year, the veteran, the yep. goat, Ali Briggenshaw yep. for the Broncos. Lauren Brown, who was leading the overall mm. votes um, before she got injured yeah. from the Titans. And Taryn Aiken from the Roosters. Now, I think... Lauren and Taryn miss games because of yeah. injury. Yeah. That could be the spanner in the works. It could be. Mm. It very well could be um, because Ali hasn't missed a game. No. <laughs> what about, isn't that amazing? Crazy. Uh, and she doesn't play in a dinner suit. Either. No. Like, she's right in there. Yeah. She's had incredible longevity and her, her ability to actually stay on the field yeah. is amazing. I think, yeah, just the injury. I think because Lauren got injured so early. Mm. Lauren was probably going to be, she was on track to get wind Dalian. Yeah. That's how well she was yeah. playing. But I think the other two would have overtaken her because of that. And yeah. I think Taryn's only missed one or two games, mm. but she was also incredibly influential. Yeah. And I'm torn between yeah. Ali and, and Taryn. Which I'm trying to do math. Me I'm too. Like, you know, what could have My happened. math is not mathing. Yeah. I'm going to go Spanner. I, I'm going to go with Taryn. Okay. I'm going to say it could potentially be Taryn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a really interesting one. Hey? It is. It's like, it's one that oh, I'm also not bothered if I'm wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know, this is the thing as well. It's like at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, they're all incredible. Everyone deserves this. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Okay. Hooker of the year, Jada Ferguson from She's the Broncos. She has been great. And it's yeah. awesome to see her in the, this finalist yep. um, list. Keely Davis from the Roosters, one yes. you spoke about. And Olivia Higgins for the Knights. Yeah. All three of them have been incredible. They Jada sure Ferguson have. probably most improved for, for sure. the Broncos for this sure. year. Earning a starting spot yes. over Destiny Brill, yeah. who is an origin player. Yeah. That's how well she's playing. 100%. Yeah, I was really impressed with Jada. Mm. Uh, Keely has played so much footy for the yep. Roosters this yep. year, as does he go. Yeah. I don't, neither of them have missed a game. No. So it's, ah, uh, it's a tough one. I'm, who would I say? I feel like it's probably between Keely and mm. Olivia. Yeah. And, Oh, I'm going to go with Higo, I think. Yeah. Olivia Higgins. Okay. Yeah. All righty. That's a tough one. That is a tough <laughs> is one. A tough I category. think we're going into another really tough oh, one here. Always. With prop of the year. Yep. Elsie Albert, who actually came away with the play, uh, player of the year for the Eels yep. last night. Angelina Takaranga Katoa, mm. I know you're a big fan of from the mm, Dragons. Mm-hmm. Grace Kemp from the Raiders, who had yep. a great year. Oh, Millie yeah. Elliott from the Roosters, and Shana Mato from the Titans. Yeah, this is a tough one. Mm. Elsie's had a great year for the Eels. She has. Um, Millie missed a couple of games. Suspension. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be the only thing that sort of puts her further down yep. the list. Because she's such a quality player. Like, mm. great game on the weekend. Yeah. Incredible game. Shannon Mato always has incredible output for yep. the Titans. Gracie, I loved actually seeing her start. Yeah. I think it really suits her. For sure. Like, I know she's sort of been coming off the bench, but starting really lifted, you know, lifted her game to another level. Mm. I feel like it could potentially be Te Akaranga Kato. Mm. Because whenever the Dragons played, her... Yep. And Tawini yeah. were the biggest output performers. Massive. So I think it could potentially be between uh, Angelina and either Grace 
or Shannon. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm, I'll say Angelina. I, yeah. feel, I feel like it might be one where, yeah, yeah, she constantly has incredible workload yeah. for the Dragons. Yeah, I mean, I feel like she was out of every Dragons performance, even in their losses, so we're consistent. talking about her. Yeah, so consistent. For sure. All right. Yeah. yeah. Second row of the year, Amber Hall from <laughs> the Roosters. Cheat code. Yep. Mahalia Murphy from the Eels. Mm. Olivia Koenig from the Roosters. Mm. Romy Teitzel from the Broncos and Yasmin Clydesdale from the Knights. Oh, wow. What the heck? Look, none of these categories are easy. No. <clears throat> none of them are easy, are they? Amber Hall, absolutely incredible. Constantly making highlight reels yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the Roosters. Mahalia being captain this year, she was incredible she for the was, Eels. Yeah. Koenig on the opposite side to yeah. Amber has been fantastic. Hers is more that ball playing ability. Yeah. Um, Romy was great for the Broncos yeah. as well, getting yeah. through plenty of defence, like protecting her half, and then obviously she goal kicks yeah. for them too. Yeah. And then Yasmin Clydesdale. Huge you know, year for Yasmin. She might be the last on the list, but she's probably first I in think my she mind. Is, yeah. I think she has – she's uncompromising. Her competitiveness is – consistently on yep. show yep. and she's always one of the best performers for the Knights. She's had a huge year. Yeah. So she was so a, good for the Sky Blues. Yeah, she's like great. She's yeah. got Sky Blues player of the yeah. year. Yep. Um, so I think in a very, very tight field <laughs> yeah. again, I think Yasmin, Yazzie's probably got this one. Yep. yep. Alrighty. Lock of the year. Yep. I mean, oh, take these for some workhorses. Oh. <laughs> Finalists. Yep. Georgia Hale from the Titans, Alexis Twenier from the Dragons, who we already spoke about, mm -hmm. and Samaima Taufa from the Raiders. God. Oh, wow. <laughs> All three were incredible yeah. for their clubs. I mean, yeah. Georgia Hale went through a stage, I think it was three or four games in a row, where she clocked 58. 59 and 61 tackles. Yeah, because in the top four tackle performances of NRLW history, yeah. she has three of those yeah. positions. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Crazy. Mental. Yeah. Mental. And then I think Bree Chester was the only one. Yeah, who, she just cracked she in there. She just cracked in there just to get past Georgia yeah. with one. So, and she's a captain as well. So, yeah. you know, phenomenal. Alexis Twenier for the Dragons. She was one I felt like I called her name consistently yeah. in the game. Yeah. Incredible performer. Yeah. 19 years old. That's, Nineteen. That's insane. Uh, yeah. So that's that's massive. She's kind of the doggies next year too. Yeah. Like that is such a great her and Tiakaranga Kato. I know. Mm. Oh, and then gosh. Mima for the Raiders. Yeah. I expect nothing less no, out of no. her. She was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um I think however, I feel like this one might be the youngster that, All right. that pips the other two yep. at the post. I think okay. Alexis Tuenier All right. may be Pipping the other two, okay. just. So oh, that'll be interesting. I know. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Then we get into the coach of the year. Yep. Scott Prince from the Broncos, Steve George Alice from the Eels, and Tony Herman from the Sharks. Yeah. And you feel like Georgie and, and Tony Herman, they've both taken their sides, and, and particularly for the Eels to go from wooden spooners to get to the last game of the regular yep. season and just be outside the finals. And yep. then obviously Tony's going into a grand final. Yeah. Not to take anything away from Princey, but... I just feel like those two, it's this amazing sort of transformation for both sides. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Scott took them to a minor premiership, oh, the Broncos. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I do feel like, however, it probably will be between George Alice and Herman. Yeah. Uh, I think George Alice has had the biggest turnaround mm. when it comes to, like you said, Yeah. they were last yeah. in 2023 yeah. and they were pushing for a finals berth this year. However, I feel like Tony Herman probably yeah. gets this one because yeah. he's gone from not making the four last year yeah. to making a grand final this mm. year. So, yeah. Now, forgive my ignorance. With the coach of the year, mm -hmm. are those, you know, the same group of people who are voting for the players? I would say so. Yeah. That's I how would, that works. That's how I imagine mm. it would work. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I'm okay. assuming that that's yeah. how it would work. Well, that's, that'll be good to know. And, and yeah. you do feel like with the way that the Sharks started the season... Yeah, six in a you row. Know, first, it, it first should club, put them. First club to do yeah. in NRLW history. Yeah. Clock six in a row. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. It's awesome. And then they're, they're you know, in their maiden grand final. Yeah. In the second year of ever starting in the competition. How good. Um, yeah. How good is yeah. that? All righty. Captain of the year, <sighs> Ali Brigginshaw, mm -hmm. Isabel Kelly, Town of Like, <laughs> come on. Come oh, on. my goodness. And I think, like, yeah, does it go to the captain of the <sighs> minor premiership? 
winning side or the captains of either of the teams in the grand final. Like that is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. I'm glad I'm not voting on yeah. this because how do you – Like the it's fearless like splitting, it's splitting leaders. the atom. Yeah. The, like my goodness. That's crazy. Um, oh, I, I don't even – I don't even know where to start. Minor premiership, two grand finalists. Uh, I feel like it's probably – probably going to be either between Isabel Kelly and Tiana Penatani and I can't split them. Yeah. I can't. I actually no. can't split them. Yeah. Well, that's the one we can – I reckon we can get a pass on that. That's yeah, way thank too you. hard. <laughs> no splinters way. calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I actually can't split no them. No way. No I can't. way. I can't. Rookie of the year. Yep. Evie Jones from mm-hmm. the Knights, Casey Ray from the Dragons and Natasha Penatani from the West Tigers. Yeah. Now, we all thought – that Rory Owen would be there, right? So yes. there's eligibility requirements or Stacey Walker. Yeah. And neither of them can be eligible for Rookie of the Year because you need to have played in a rugby league system for two years. Oh, there so you go. they've just jumped they've... ahead too many yes. steps too quickly. So I think that, you know, we all kind of speculated to see um, those two there. So whilst they have been incredible in their first year in the NRLW, they're not eligible Regardless. It's an incredible It's a already list. a very tight yeah. and, and yeah. incredible list. I think list. My, my rookie of the year criteria is very, very rookie. Yeah. It, they haven't been in the system for two years, so they haven't actually. Exactly. That's even more of a rookie exactly. in my mind I because know. they've come from absolutely no rugby Nowhere. league yeah. to then all of a sudden in their very first year. <laughs> Be at the top. Like anyway, that's crazy. That's an argument for another day. Yeah, yeah. But. These are incredible. And you know what's exciting too? They're all young. Yes. They're all very young players. So they've yes. got a massive future in the game. Yeah. And uh, Tash Penatani played every game for the Tigers. Mm. Every game. I had her in my rookie team of the yep. year. I had Casey Ray in my rookie team yeah. of the year as well. Again, yep. she had an incredible game for the um, Junior Sky Blues. Yeah. And Evie Jones has been fantastic yeah. for the Knights this yep. year. Uh, I do – I feel like Casey Ray will probably – yeah. Just take this one out. Yeah. Just she's and played more games. And she had to step up, you know, in into a She had to play multiple positions. She did. So she did. yeah. So I think it, it just I think it would be Casey Ray just over Tash Penatani. Yeah. And then Evie Jones, she just didn't get as many games as the others. Yeah. This yep. year. But so, geez, the, but, the future is bright. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes. Okay, with all of those names out there, we've covered our predictions mm-hmm. around the team positions of the year. Who do you think will take out the big one? Whoa. I feel like it is going to be between Julia Robinson mm. and Isabel Kelly. Yeah, wow, okay. Yeah. The more I think about it, I feel like it, it's probably going to be, tw- be between those two, which would then negate my centre of the year because yeah, I, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said Tiana for centre of the year. Yeah. But I just, the more I've thought about it, yeah. the more I've thought of just how much work yeah. Isabel does. Yeah. I feel like it could potentially be, be between those two. Yeah. 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 Uh, Izzy has definitely been at the, in my brain, Stand just out. having yeah. kind of. Well, I'm gonna, can I change my name? Center of the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's because she can't. Well, yeah. you can't be. You, you can't, can't not, 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 not the make position. the center and then make. Yeah. And then win the I just, Yeah, I just think like you think of that record breaking game. You think of that consistency. Yeah. And just her toughness as well, like getting oh injured, God. coming back and playing, dislocating your elbow, yeah. and and doing it. I do think, and, and you know, how wonderful is it to, to have gone through this list and mm. we, we see those names we've been seeing for a long time now mm. who are just like holding down the fort and leading but then also bringing these young girls along yeah. with them now like it is really exciting and I think yeah I think Izzy's had an incredible yeah, season she has. so I, I wouldn't be surprised if it is her yeah. but yeah. yeah and I think you know if Lauren Brown hadn't got injured yes She's probably pushing. For sure. You know, and then even like Taryn Aiken is probably still pushing for exactly. my mind too. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, they're probably the four that I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, probably Izzy because she hasn't missed a game. Yeah. Oh, I can't <laughs> even wait. when she has been injured, she's come I back. I know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I cannot wait. It is time for our final tip Ooh. and prediction for what's going to happen in the mm-hmm. grand final. Mm-hmm. We've gone through all the matchups. Mm-hmm. We've talked about who's going to take away the big ones tonight at the Dally M's. Mm-hmm. We've talked about how great this season has been and it all comes down to this. Sunday afternoon, the Roosters and the Sharks. I'm going to need a winner, a margin, 
a Karen Murphy medal yep. and a first try scorer. I haven't even thought about first try scorer. Ah. Okay. Uh, unsurprisingly, I'm going with the Sharks. Of course. To win by four. Mm. Uh, Karen Murphy medalist, Emma Tonegato. Mm. And first try scorer. First try scorer, I'm going to go with Amber Hall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. I think it's going to be really tight. Yeah. It's going to be four points. Four points yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's going to be the maximum, even though I know everyone's going to say, oh, the Sharks got flogged by the Roosters. I know. But also then you look at the performance on the weekend, the Sharks kept the Broncos to nil. I also think the psychological element mm. of they got us like that. And yep. this could work either way, right? Yep. Roosters, psychologically, we destroyed them the last time we played them. Mm. That fuels you. But from the Sharks, they flogged us yeah. and we owe it. Yeah. And also, I think Em spoke about this with you. Yeah. It's like, no one's given the Sharks no. a chance. No. I'll give you a fighting chance. I, I like an underdog. Yeah. I like an underdog. Oh, my goodness. I what about you? Who are you? What? Who's the winner? Who's the um, margin? Who's the Karen Murphy medalist? Everyone's going to so think that we're both being really biased, but I don't <laughs> care. No, they won't let us back in the Shire. Yes. No. Genuinely, I really think the Sharks will win. Yeah. I, I just think this year, even with the, those cups, that dip, I think it happened at the right time. Mm. And I just think they are so well gelled and like the love and the culture around the team is such a key element. Mm. I think that Anessa Beardall could have the game of her life. Yeah. I just love her aggression and I think she is such a game changer for them. Um, and I love how we spoke about that kind of matchup between her and Sergis. Mm. And, and mm. you can't keep your eyes away from Sergis in the same way you can't keep your no. eyes away from, from Biddle. And I think Anessa will get on top of her and yeah. get under her skin. Ooh. And and but I reckon they're gonna Go hard at but it. But I think that will be the, something that when I'm on the sideline watching, uh, yeah. I will be watching that a lot. I'm kind of jealous you're on the sideline. Yeah, that yeah. You get to that's what I, that's be my favorite it. thing about being on the sideline yeah, with these too. big games is because you can hear it and you can mm. feel it and all of that sort of but stuff. But then you hear the benches too and you see the energy from yes. the benches. That's what I like yeah, about being on for the sure. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'll go sharks. Um, Anessa Biddle. Anessa Biddle. I would have to say it's only four points in it. Yep. First try scorer. Oh, God. Last year I called it as Jamie Chapman you and did. I was right. Yeah. Uh, so you got, you got big shoes to fill. <laughs> that's the only thing I've tipped correctly in two years of doing this podcast. Oh, goodness. First try scorer. Um, Ellie Johnston. <laughs> when she comes on, maybe it's super tight. She comes on, bang across the line. Yeah, yeah. We so you're going to start that. strong. I like it. I, okay. I just like seeing across. I just the line. like seeing front row score tries. So let's I. be honest. I mean, it's like it's not meant to happen, and that's why it's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to tear up her um, card to the front row. Yeah. Isn't she? She's scored so many tries. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So many. I, I tell you what, regardless of what happens, I just it's gonna think be a great game. it truly has been the best NRLW season we've seen so far. Mm. And to, I feel like that every year. Yeah. So that's such a good sign and yeah. what a great privilege well, it's it is exciting and it's sport. only going to get better because For we're sure. adding two more teams next year. Yes. There's big players, big player movement. There's going to be even more in the off season. Yes. So Watch this space. Yes. And watch the game. Yes. On the weekend. Oh if you my can't goodness. be there in person, watch it on Channel 9. Everyone's going to be having free. their grand final barbecues. It's going to be a warm day. Yep. Make sure that TV is on. Yep. We're doing coverage from the morning. Like yeah, you yeah. want to have it on as I soon know. as you wake up. I'm doing today's show. Oh, <laughs> early. nice. Nice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Sammy Thiday and I will be on there. Not super early, but we'll okay. be on there early. Yeah, nice and early. Yep. Well, you know, daylight savings starts. So mm. make sure you clocks are all set right get up turn that television on watch all what a great day, day. footy what a great day we've got all three games as well oh, yeah oh yeah. yeah you're doing the sideline i for am the first for, for the interstate um challenge as well yeah which is and the new town jets yeah feeder club yeah 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 it's the um, sharkies. also so hot during that game so i know I'm it is it's to really really warm it's really warm well, thank you so much for joining us for the NRLW Weekly Podcast for this, the 2024 season. We love sitting here and talking with you about these girls. We, I can't believe we're going to have to wait a long time before the next season now, but it's just getting better. And thank you for coming along the ride. Mm.
This has been the NRLW Weekly Podcast with Marley Silva and Ruan Sims. Thanks to Light and Easy fueling Australian sport. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Owner. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.